you are about to learn four key ways that you can build your public speaking confidence. We're gonna be talking to Brendan from another YouTube channel called Master Talk. The goal of Brendan's channel is to help you overcome your public speaking fear, increase your skills, and help you share your voice and ideas with the world. I've had Brendan on the channel before, and he also offers free interactive live online workshops every few weeks. I'll put a link to his channel and his free workshop page in the description below the video. I've gone through his free workshop and it's great. Let's ask Brendan for his top four tips to build your public speaking confidence. First, Brendan, can you tell us about your jigsaw puzzle metaphor and how it relates to public speaking? Absolutely, Alex. Communication, and especially when it comes to speeches, are exactly like a jigsaw puzzle, those toys we used to play as kids. The question we need to ask ourselves is when we're working on a jigsaw puzzle, which pieces do we start with first? And the answer is the edges, because they're easier to find in the box, and they're also easier to put together. So by working on the edges first and then tackling the middle, it's much easier for us to build the jigsaw puzzle. But the problem is we don't apply that same analogy to communication. When we have a speech coming up, whether it's in the boardroom or any other presentation situation, we tend to start with the middle first. We shove a bunch of content or presentations and we ramble the whole thing throughout. Not the right approach. So instead what I recommend is start with the edges. Do just your introduction 30, 40, 50 times until it's perfect. 50 seems like a big number, but actually isn't. It's really easy because the introduction is only 60 seconds. Same thing with the close. What's a great movie with a terrible ending? Last time I checked, terrible movie. So same rule, present your conclusion 50 times, and then after a few hours of practice, then tackle the middle. Well, that's a great tip. Brendan, think of your speech as a jigsaw puzzle and it'll help demystify the process. Now, one of my favorite tips or activities that you do in your free workshops is called the random word exercise. Can you tell us more about that? Of course, Alex, and I'm sure you enjoyed that exercise as well from the workshop. So the random word exercise is where you take one word and it could be anything, light bulb, lights, doorknob, and you create presentations out of thin air. Let me use Thai as an example to demonstrate this. It's Sunday morning, and I'm getting ready for breakfast. And the first thing that I put on, besides my amazing dress shirt for the day, to go to church, is my Thai. A Thai symbolizes so much more than just looking good for the day. It symbolizes empowerment. It symbolizes the way that we show up for others and how we look and how we feel. Ties are such a special moment in our lives and I encourage you to tie one up yourself. So that's just an example. I just did something extremely random. But the point is, is when we're able to deal with uncertainty, anything becomes possible. And what I always like to say, Alex, is if we can make sense out of nonsense, we can make sense out of anything. So I encourage everyone who's listening to this to practice the random word exercise five minutes a day, five times a day. If you do this for a year, you'll have done the exercise over 1,800 times. And that's the power of small actions on a daily basis. That's an excellent way to build your confidence. I've done the random word exercise several times and already I can feel myself gaining more confidence to speak impromptu like that off the cuff. And that translates really well to any kind of public speaking confidence. Now, many of us, when we're getting ready to do public speaking, we focus on the anxiety and the stress that comes with it. But what's a better way to think about it? Absolutely, Alex, I completely agree. Anxiety, stress, is something we all feel when we think about communication. So here's an analogy I'd love for us to use. A lot of communication is focused on negativity. So a question I love to ask that allows us to shift from the stress to empowerment is the following. How would your life change if you were an exceptional communicator? This is a question many of us don't really think to ask ourselves. We dream about our vacations, the expensive cars and houses we want to buy, the glamorous things we want to get, but very few of us focus on, wait a second, 
If I lived in a world where I was much better at communication, what would that world look like? Because communication, as you know, Alex, is so much more than just giving a presentation at work. It's the way we talk to our families. It's the way we travel. It's the way we talk to strangers at a park or when we order food at a restaurant. It's every interaction we have with every human being. So I encourage all of us to start thinking more about this question so that we can use communication not just as a tool for change and impact, but as a tool to lead more fulfilling lives. Well, that's a fantastic way to think about this. And on a related note, another reason we often don't have confidence when public speaking is we're too focused on ourselves and that anxiety. And the irony is by focusing on our fears, it can make our fears even louder. Can you give us a more helpful focus? You're absolutely right, Alex. If we focus too much on the anxiety, we won't get the result that we're looking for. So here's an analogy I'd love to propose. Let's assume communication is like a boxing match. One side of the ring is the fear that comes with it, and the other side is the message. Why are we sharing it? Why is it important to us? And when we think about the fear, the point I want to drive is we can't remove the fear. This is something I really want to emphasize because at the end of the day, regardless of who we are, it's difficult to remove 100% of all of the anxiety that we might have. Even for me, there's always going to be situations where even I'm scared of communication. Imagine if Elon Musk called me tomorrow and said, hey, Brendan, I need you to coach me on communication. Yeah, I'd probably have some anxiety. So the fear will always be there. But, and there's a big but here, we need to make sure that when our message and our fear meet in the middle of that boxing match, that our message wins the match, that our message gets the knockout punch. As long as our message is more important than our, the fear that comes with it, we'll always be more successful. Think about me. I started Mass Talk when I was 22 years old. Who in the world am I to share communication tips with the world? You're such an incredibly accomplished person, Alex, you have a PhD in the subject, so I had a lot of nerves starting it. So why did I do it anyways? I did it for the 15-year-old girl who can't afford a communication coach. That's why I pressed record. So you're right, Alex. We need to stop focusing on the anxiety and focus more on the direction. If we became great communicators, let's focus on the future and we'll get the result that that future holds. Again, that's just awesome public speaking advice, a very helpful way to approach our next presentation. Now, I wanted to recommend to you, the viewer, watching or signing up for Brendan's free Rockstar Communicator Live workshop. He does this every few weeks, and he's going to help you apply in real time some of the tips that he highlighted here in this video we've been talking about. As mentioned, I've gone through it, and you will learn a lot, I promise you. And second, go subscribe to Brendan's channel. Brendan, thanks for coming on the channel. Thanks for having me on the channel, Alex. And we will see you all next time. Take care.